So if you watch the very first video, I discovered what the reason was for why the valves weren't moving in this engine. <clears throat> and it was because these cam followers were stuck. I've already reinstalled them and I kind of described in that first video that uh, you know they have machine flats on each end that go on the inside so that as those two pieces push against each other that's how they slide better is because of those machine flats so just making sure they do move still and they move freely Okay, so I don't want them to get stuck again. So next this timing gear and then this little counter counter uh, clockwise thread screw goes in. So what I'm going to do here is, I've already done it once, but I'm going to do it again. You can never have too much oil in these bearings or in this area of the engine really. <coughs> I don't think I really need to do anything. But this screw here actually screws into this thing once it's in there. So I'm just going to drop this in place. Just got to make sure you have your followers in place, obviously, or you're kind of going to have a bad day then. So this is a reverse thread, so I'm going to look like I'm actually unscrewing it. And in fact, I'm actually screwing it in place. And this is the same screwdriver that I had made a bit thinner to break it loose. Now I'm not going to put any real torque on this thing at all because it really can't back out <clears throat> because this little cover holds it in place. But timing this Inya engine, or Inya engine, I'm sorry, OS engine, relies on this dot right here. That's the timing mark. These that look like dots are actually screws on the other side that hold this gear in place. This is actually the timing dot. So that's going to want to be in a certain orientation. I'll have to quickly check my instructions, uh, either top dead center or at the bottom, when this is installed. In fact, there's actually a notch on this ring here, too. I don't know. If, yeah, you can kind of see it there. There's a notch that indicates the orientation. I was hoping it would actually coincide with this being straight up and down, the slot in there being straight up and down, because it'd make it a lot easier for me to time it. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like it is. So what I'm going to end up having to do to set the timing on this engine now is... Make sure this thing is at top dead center, and you can tell that by the woodruff key slot needs to be at the bottom here, in line with that. And then I'm pretty sure that it's this hole has to be, or that timing dot has to be at the top. So I'm pretty sure that this engine is timed right right now. However, since I didn't have sealer on there, I'm still going to have to seal it up. So that's what the process is going to be, is make sure my crankshaft is in the right orientation. Make sure this is in the right orientation, then just mate them together. And that's pretty much as simple as it is as far as uh, timing this engine. Then it's completely done, you don't have to worry about anything else after that. So believe it or not, I actually refer to one of my older videos on how to set the timing and I had found that uh, using putting this timing dot at the bottom was probably the best thing to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to put some of this Permatex motor seal on this and seal, create my new seal or gasket for this. Being very careful not to get any on that gear. That's exposed there. Alright, so I'm going to set my timing gear, timing dot at the bottom, and hold that in place with this finger. Make sure my crankshaft is still at top dead center and put these two things together. So 
That should be timed. A couple screws in here and I can verify it. Clean this gasket maker off. It's squeezed out. Okay, this engine is timed. Now we can continue on with the rest of the installation. I'm going to load this area up with quite a bit of oil just because it doesn't get a whole lot. Now, that thing's all oiled up, ready for the next step. Okay, I'm going to get ready to install the head here. I need to get these little O rings kind of pressed on at the bottom of the pushrod tubes, but one of them doesn't really want to stay. So we're going to get kind of interesting. Before I do that, I want to put a drop of oil in each of these screw holes. A couple drops down on that on top of that piston. So, there's two different length screws that go in the head. You can see here, these two are longer than these two, so I'm just going to. I have a feeling that the short screws go in the front and the long screws go in the back and I can quickly tell by just seeing how they protrude and if they protrude evenly through there then that's how it goes. So the long screws go in the back and the head is you know, a little bit thicker in the back there too. So let's try this balancing act here where we try to hold this in place. Oh crap. I installed the little rings up here on the top of this too. I'm just going to run, drop these screws in here and see if I can just get them to bite a little bit. Not run them in, just get them to bite. So then I can kind of make some adjustments here. I just kind of need help holding this together while I get these push rods and O-rings seated. Where did my magnifier go? thing you got to be careful of here is you want to make sure that this thing is going on evenly and these o-rings and push rocks can tend to kind of they don't get seated properly they can kind of tend to cause that to happen so I ran those two front ones in a little bit I want to run the front or the back ones in a little bit I want to run the front ones in a little bit kind of alternate these guys and make sure that this head is seating down evenly all the way around. Alright, so that's it. Next thing is to install our rocker arm support. Again, another drop of oil in that hole. This rocker arm support can go either way, so there's really no issue there. Okay, so that's in place. We're good to just kind of drop those guys in here. I can feel 
feel them moving. And I think I'm at bottom dead center. So, now, the intake and exhaust rocker arms, they may have been in orientation, but since I'm going to be setting the valves, I mean, they're identical anyway. Not a problem. They're identical. I'm going to be setting the valves anyway. The shaft, I dressed up with some 1500 grit emery cloth. So that should be nice and smooth. I'm going to keep my flats upward and make sure that when I install these, that I make sure that my push rod engages in that cup there. And just slide the shaft in place with the spacer that's going on next. Just as it's about to come out there, you want to stick your next rocker arm in. And slide that shaft all the way in. Get your wrench and run these set screws down. Hold that shaft in place. Now we should see some valve action here. Like we got some good valve action. Okay. Uh, I guess I could install a glow plug now and actually test the compression. Before we do that, let's put our Woodruff key in here. A little oil in that guide. Drop our Woodruff key in there. Slide this baby on. 